The poor boy in Manchester in the UK got shot at Christmas. Just a postgraduate student going about his business with his friend. Okay? So what I need you to understand is that sometimes we need to change the frame if we're going to understand the world and plan to succeed. Does that make sense? Right. Are there any questions or anything so far? Are you okay? You mentioned uh, workers, right? So in case of a worker, do I need to show him the entire frame? I'm just showing a particular part of the uh, whole picture. Okay, so the question from the front is, if you're trying to talk to a worker, do you have to show him the whole frame or just a little bit more? Is that right? Okay. In basic human terms, I would argue that what you have to do is to show him that you're prepared to talk. And that there might be some flexibility in what happens. That's the first most important thing. That there's a little room for dialogue. Because if there's no room for dialogue, why are we talking? If I can't change your mind, then why are we talking? If I can't change your mind, you're talking to me to tell me what's going to happen. If I have no voice, then why would I listen? Does that make sense? Yes. Just like my daughter, tied in a room. There's no negotiation. If I say, I'd like you to tidy your room, if you tidy your room, this, 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 and this, if you don't, this, this, and this, you choose, then she's a human being with choice. If I do this, do this, she says, I'm treating her as a dog. Okay? So in some ways, how much of the picture isn't as important as I see you as a human being just like me. Yeah? So, again, when my students come to me sometimes, is plagiarism a big issue here? No, not us though. In the UK, plagiarism is like, it's worse than murder. At a university, if you get caught plagiarizing, they will kill you. <laughs> oh, no, seriously, then. Because they, it's, they regard it as theft and dishonesty. So that some students from India, from Africa, from other places, they have a very free approach to other people's property. <laughs> yes, I have need of this, so yes, I'll just borrow this. I'll change a few, few words, but I'll borrow it. And I haven't even been solved as borrowed to that. Just cut and paste, no problem. But in the UK, that's regarded as intellectual theft. Breaking intellectual copyright. It's like a major, major problem. Because if you think about it, a lot of what we produce in the West now is, in, is um, intellectual. We don't make anything anymore. We only provide services. We only have intellectual copyright. So if we lose that, we have no way of making money anymore. <coughs> Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's one of the reasons why it's really hot. Because you can make money out of knowledge. All right? So they're very hot on plagiarism. And many students from outside of Europe have problems with understanding referencing. So what we have to say is, we know how it is abroad, but here, you have to do it this way. You have to. Because we don't care why you plagiarized. All we see is the fact. And if the facts say you've taken work from somebody else without acknowledging it, you plagiarize and you'll be punished. The minimum punishment for plagiarism is, to have, is you have to repeat the course. Yeah? That's the minimum punishment. The maximum punishment is this is where you used to study. Okay? They take it that seriously. Okay? So again, it's really important 
to see things from other people's point of view, even if you don't understand it or you don't like it. Okay? Now, has anybody once seen this picture before? Right. 1968 Olympics, these two fellows giving back power salutes. Okay? Now, this picture still moves me. Because it's men making a stand for something apart from themselves. Does that make sense? When this happened, lots of people in the arena were, boo, boo, get down, get down, get down, bad, 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 bad. Because they said, the Olympics is non-political. It's not about politics. But what these fellows and other athletes were saying was, no, but the Olympics exist in the real world, where people who look like this are treated badly. We have to make sure that you remember that there's a world, a world outside of the Olympic Village. Is that alright? Yes. Now in some ways, in modern India, there are some parallels. All of you know about fair and lovely. <laughs> yeah? <coughs> so boys know, we don't use that stuff. <laughs> Very handsome. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so coming from the UK, I wonder I, why in God's name would anyone want to look like this? Because it's nice, it's lovely, it's fair, it's lovely. But if God gave you this colour, why would you want to look this colour? We need to be aware of our external things twist how we think without us even knowing. Okay? So we've got fair and lovely. We now have fair and handsome. Because fellows like to look pale too. Right? When you look at the TV, when you look at soap operas and movies, for the good, good stars, do you see many dark people? Yes. Are there many dark stars? Yes, many? Or, or mostly pale stars? Okay. Because in some ways, again, looking at the issues about problems and solutions, some people might say, the problem is my skin looks too dark. It looks like I'm coming from a poor family. Or some low caste thing going on. Right? Other people might say, these people might say, you were born into a certain family, a certain caste with a certain colour. You need to be proud of that. So what for some people is a source of shame, for other people it's a source of pride. Does that make sense? I mean, I'm, just, I'm just using that example just as, to show you what I'm saying about different ways of understanding the same thing. Okay? Send these slides to uh, the doctor so you can have them afterwards. So what this is about is about ways of understanding academic writing as a problem. So can we move on to the next one, please? This one. This one's a little boring. Keep going. It's great. That's great. Excellent. Now, these are some key questions to ask of anybody who stands here. Then you can ask some of any academic paper, any management, anything. Does this paper, this article, this current teacher, does it do what it says? It makes promises. Does it deliver? Is there any evidence that it delivers? Yeah? I was talking to my friend on the way in. You've all got smart who got smartphones? Yes. Right. In the UK there's not just white hot hotspot Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi hotspots, but there's 3G networks, which means that anywhere I can go online. You have to say, okay, calm down. <laughs> so where is it then? Because I've never found it. So you have it here too. Yes. Excellent. Alright. 
Because in some ways, one of the things that occurred to me was that if you have no Wi-Fi or you have no network access, your smartphone is useless. You might as well just have your mom's phone. <laughs> Text and talk. You can do. Right? But the point is, is about you have to ask of anything. Any promised solution, any technique, anything. Does it do what it says? Forget the hype for a minute. Is there any evidence that this works? Okay. Next point. Who's trying to sell me this thing? Because remember, selling isn't just about microphones, phones, clothes, roses, buildings, qualifications. Right? It's about ideas, ways of looking at things, solutions. So, who's trying to sell me this thing? What are their interests? And does what they say about their interests make any sense? So what i found, when I've come to places in India and said, I'm here doing some service work, can I teach your students for free? For free? <laughs> what is it you want? <laughs> I'm here to do service work. I get paid a lot of money and I like to help people. I like to teach people and to learn things. No, really, though. No. What is it you want? Why don't you want any money? Because I'm being paid already. My university pays me. I get paid. Why don't I need extra? No. No. Not like in this because we don't understand it. If we work, we work for money. Or we work for a reference. Or there's a reason. This whole working because you're a good fellow, no, we don't understand this. Okay? So, in some ways, one of the things we need to question is the people who are telling us stuff. What are their interests? What evidence are they basing their ideas on? How do they know? So the government in the UK says that the best way of cutting down um, problem families is to remove money from them. Now, unlike, unlike India, there's a welfare system in the UK. Okay? Now, it's a cliche, but forgive me. The current government in the UK says that to make, forgive me, rich people work harder, we give you more money. Does that sound okay? To make poor people work harder, we take their money away. Okay? That's what it is. If you're poor people now, you're supposed to say no. Okay, good. So in some ways, they make claims, but there's no evidence for them. They're ideological claims. Does that make sense? They're claims based on beliefs, not necessarily on reality. Right? Because it doesn't, to me, it doesn't seem to make any sense. But if these people work harder if you give them more money, these people will work harder if you take them away, if you take their money away. Yeah? Does that make sense? Right? But that's what the current government says. The other thing we need to concern ourselves with, how cool is that? <laughs> right? Is that sometimes... People say they're talking about one thing, but are really talking about something else. Does that make sense? Oh. So can we go on to the next slide, please? Oh, thank you. Now, when I was teaching in Bangalore, again, I've never seen meal times like this. Don't pretend you don't know what it's like. Okay. So, with my UK hat on, oh my God, these children are sitting on the floor eating their lunch. Oh, God, that's a very bad thing. Look, their feet are dirty. Oh my God, that's a very bad thing. Oh, look, they're eating 